There we are. Good morning, esteemed judges, guests, and fellow, fellow entrepreneurs. This is the backnap, an ergonomic freeway experience. So you may ask, how do we start the backnap? One day, me and Taylor were talking about our favorite past and video games when we realized that our posture was totally incorrect. Then we realized we could take this problem and create an opportunity. Continuing on the point that Amati previously spoke about, we chose the Backnap's mission to be a chair that provides the freedom to experience a borderless work-life culture. Chair that a, a chair that is inclusive, that supports all sizes, provides everyone who uses it with a better posture, and supports all steady at home. Current problems we see with the industry now is that many chairs have poor design leading to posture issues, lacking vital features. Currently, they are not designed for extended seated hours due to a shift in learning from work and working from home, and, many, and most chairs by, bought by institutions and schools are based on cost and quality. Thank you from Taylor's uh, about the problems. This is our value proposition. A simple ergonomic design with minimal customization provides an optimal cost. Sensory cues such as alarms and vibration using technologies can also improve posture. A subscription payment plan on a yearly or monthly basis can also improve posture and increase affordability. Market size. The global market size of ergonomic chairs is around 1.27 billion US dollars. The, um, in our home country of Singapore, it's around 125 million US dollars. As a startup company, we like to position our product to a B2B model targeting schools and later on expanding to a B2C model targeting customers. In our target market alone of Singapore, there are over 500 schools and education centers. We'd like to firstly target these schools as it aligns with our vision to improve the posture of all students. There are also 500,000 students. Once our foundations are built, we wish to transform our company into a B2B to C model, selling directly to the students. Timing. Timing is everything. The perfect time is now to create ergonomic chairs for students all around the world as students are spending an extended amount of time on chairs. Also, increased awareness of health, awareness of good posture have become apparent because of social media, providing that customers want ergonomic chairs. Our current revenue model will not be the traditional one-time fee by monthly subscription to keep and allow, to allow us to have a sustained revenue. Currently, it's $30 per chair per month with a minimum term of three months and new models every year with adjusted designs. These older designs will be subsidized and sold off to the lower income education centers. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We would like to highlight our next steps. Firstly, we would like to expand the team to include a chiropractor and industrial designer to help us review the product and, and show that our customers that we have good products that can be trusted. We'd like to create a prototype and validate that prototype with consumer feedback, create a spreadsheet of our business with a detailed model of costs and revenues, and approach the MOE for, and CPE for target schools and sponsors. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We would like to, list, uh, we'd like to answer your questions. Lovely. Thank you for that, boys. I really appreciate that. Um, judges, I'll open up the floor to you first. Can I, um, can I ask you, you, you talk about a number of different markets that you uh, would like to reach. Um, have you thought about the different ways in which you would need to organize your business to reach to those different markets, whether it be, I mean, clearly education, business, individual students, probably going to be very different, I would imagine. Um, I think... Uh, for for it, firstly, we would like to target schools, and we can approach MOE and CPE to uh, to make sure that we can uh, assist schools. And later on, like when our company grows, we like to uh, then target uh, customers. I would like to also add on to Matthew's point. I think once we've got connections with the school, and we've got we uh, we can use that connection to leverage it and try and sell directly to their students at, uh, for home use. Mm. Okay. Can I ask a follow-up follow question, which is, um, you are the only team uh, uh, presenting today. Um, how is the experience of working kind of jointly rather than on your own? Uh, I think it's very, uh, very, like, very good because, like, if you're stuck on a problem or something like that, you can always ask your teammate, uh, like, Taylor, like, whenever I'm stuck on a problem, I can ask Taylor for help, and then he can, uh, yeah, so for our product. Uh, I also think that I agree with the Matthew. I think that we can pull our ideas and we can also figure out uh, what the problem is when we are uh, currently thinking up new ideas or stuck on some design issue. Good, thanks. Can I just ask, you know, you, you are talking about different industries. So if you talk about education, um, you know, there might be a size constraint. Um, so the number of students in the classroom and the size of the chair, did you consider um, the, the sizes? 
Uh, yeah, so we firstly want to create a, a simple ergonomic chair that can fit all sizes, but obviously um, a cost, uh, we can create customization for different able kids. Uh, yes, so our chair will try and have different designs and models uh, in case this is the problem. And uh, we'll be trying to make sure that it fits every kid. And in this, we'll also be able to figure out whether it fits the custom properly. I have a quick question, Ethan, if that's OK. Taylor and Martia, I, I really like the problem that you're trying to solve. I think it's, it's a huge existent one. And I don't think that there are very many valid solutions. My question to you is, how did you think about this? What inspired you in thinking through this problem and then validating that it is indeed a problem? Uh, so uh, me and Amathia, we, we uh, play a lot of games normally, and we find that often we don't feel really good after playing as much. Our posture isn't very good. We normally uh, lean back, we relax too much. So we wanted to create a chair where we didn't need to keep monitoring ourselves, but we would be able to maintain a good posture just using the chair itself. I had a, a couple of questions. Thanks for the presentation. One is, uh, it's interesting that you have a subscription model for a physical good. So what happens if I you know, stop paying? Does someone come and take my chair back? Uh, <clears throat> the other is, uh, you know, like for example, for Secret Lab in Singapore, you have the options of buying it ready-made or you can kind of assemble it, uh, you know, do it yourself. Uh, what's the option available for the chairs that you guys plan to sell? DIY or it comes prepackaged? Uh, we believe that uh, we should sell it prepackaged. Uh, we decided on a subscription model. Uh, we think it's more affordable. That we have a lot of competition, uh, but by selling it at such a cheap price initially, we can uh, try and tap into more schools and they'll we'll be able to uh, have our te chairs tested out and we'll be able to try and uh, Put our chairs into the market first and see how it works then and uh continuing your question that if they don't pay uh i think at the start since we're targeting schools i don't think this issue will probably come up because like but later on when we expand uh, we'll have to solve the problem like to when we expand to a b2c model all right thank you folks um as we open the poll here i just have a question for you myself we've been looking and you've got actually quite a lot of uh folks who are related to schools here with you today um, so perhaps one of them is this, uh, schools generally have a budget that they would spend on each student. And one of the questions that they're going to be looking at, and partic particularly because what you, I, I guess my question is this, you've mentioned this a lot with home learning in particular, and the fact that you've realized that home learning has become a lot more of a problem. My question would be, does that become as much of a problem at school where you're moving around a bit more? Or is this problem not as prevalent when you actually have a school day within the school um, at on premises itself? Uh, I think that oh, what's it called? Like in like we spend like at least in UWC, like it's an hour and 20 minutes inside the classroom. And I feel like in most classrooms, we're not like moving around too much. We're just sitting on our chairs and like there are computers or like listening to the teacher. And actually, I, even though we're walking around, Obviously, the problem is more apparent at home because like, we're spending extended amount of time on the chairs, but it's still very relevant in school time because we're spending like a hundred, like a like hour and twenty minutes or like a little less on chairs still. 